Hello, beautiful souls. So today we are on to lesson 19. And as we can tell by today's course lesson, it is a continuation of the one from yesterday. Um, for the idea for today, is obviously the reason why your seeing does not affect you alone. So our thought for today is, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts. Um, as we were saying yesterday, that we are all responsible for how we see the world, and based on how we see the world, it will be projected in our outer experience. Um, so this, this projection is the extension of our thinking mind. And we are being shown here that um, the results of our thinking and its projection are nearly simultaneous because the cause and the effect can never be separate. They are one. You will always receive what you give. So whatever you're thinking about in here will show up in your experience and uh, it will be showing you what's within your mind. Um, so Jesus wants to stress also um, that another main focus point of today is that our minds are really joined. So this brings hope when we change the source of our thinking um, from fear to love, that we will be able to reside in a place where we share vision, where we share purpose, because our minds are joined. So I feel that this thought opens us up to hope that we no longer have to look upon a world of fear and death and sin and chaos, but instead when we are willing to change our minds about the world is when the world will affect that change. And the beautiful part is that we no longer will be seeing this world through separate eyes, but we will be seeing it through the eyes of spirit, of this one mind that we do share. So um, he's definitely bringing that back up forward today so that we can um, begin to open to the acceptance of that idea that our minds are joined. Um, and a big one here, too, is this sometimes, you know, especially um, if we're not used to the idea that our minds are joined and we're used to having our own thoughts, our own ideas, our own beliefs, um, that this can almost be a little bit shocking and almost feel like enormous responsibility or that it might be some sort of invasion of privacy. Uh, but Jesus is reminding us that we have no private thoughts. And from what I've learned through all of this mind training is that the only way we move beyond the stuckness, <laughs> the only way we move beyond the, the fears and judgment of mind is through communicating about our thoughts about it. Um, and then together, we literally are able to move beyond the illusory thoughts that we once thought were true to the correction, so that we receive the correction, which is the shared vision um, that we all have. So it's imperative to recognize that we have no private thoughts, that all of these thoughts that we think that are our own and individual to us are really not our own thoughts at all. So we're learning to kind of hand them over for, for correction, for reinterpretation, which is the healing in and of itself. Um, so I just wanted to read a line and a half here that Jesus kind of, you know, focused on around this idea that we have no private thoughts. It says, Despite your initial resistance to this idea, <laughs> you will yet understand that it must be true if salvation is possible at all. And salvation must be possible because it is the will of God. And so the reason that this thought must be true in order for salvation to be possible is because if we are, if the cause is in our mind, if we are responsible for how we see the world, then we can change it. But if we're not responsible and someone or something in this world is responsible, then we have no power to change it. So this is the freedom of salvation, that it all comes back in our court and we can change our mind from being separate to being united. Um, so the actual practical application of today's idea, Jesus says that he wants us to repeat the idea first a few times. And I find that it's almost like our mantra. Um, so we say, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts until we allow ourselves to come to that place of stillness where we then open our eyes and apply it to everything we see. You know, and, and we can do this with both eyes closed and eyes open. And um, he, Jesus stresses the idea today that the random selection of subjects for this practice period and all practice periods coming forward are to be selected at random. 
you know, so don't be, you know, picky and choosy about them based on what ones you want to look at. This thought applies to all thoughts, every single thought, every single person, every single experience that we have in our life at this time. And this is opening up the way to the recognition that there is a lack of order in miracles. So one of the first, you know, principles in miracles is there is no order in difficulty in miracles. <laughs> so this is kind of um, opening us up to realizing this is so for ourselves today. Um, so again, we can apply the thought to every thought we have, every person that comes to mind, every experience, and it is, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of this thought about Tom <laughs> or whoever it might be, right? And uh, so that's our lesson today. So with that, we can take this throughout our days, apply it as often as we can, and uh, let ourselves see things differently. So it's a beautiful, beautiful day. So everybody, have a good one, and uh, we'll talk tomorrow. Bye.